Hello and welcome back to Lectures on Linear Algebra. In this video I'd like to briefly discuss the dual space of a vector space. And so you'll remember in class uh, we defined the space of linear transformations from one vector space to another space. So if we let V be a real vector space, real here just means that the scalars are real as opposed to complex or some other type of number then we, d we can define the dual space of V to be the set V star of all linear transformations from the vector space V to the real numbers, so to the space of scalars. And these, function these, these are functions then, okay, and they're linear transformations from one vector space to another. So this set is called the dual space of V. And the dual space V star of V, we always call it V star for the dual space, it is itself a vector space, Okay, but we need to, de to, to define the operations to know what kind of vector space or, or how the vectors behave. And since the vectors in this V star are going to be functions, then the, the operations are going to be the pointwise addition and scalar multiplication from our function spaces. So we've studied function spaces before, and um, these are the same operations except now the domain space is a vector space itself and the image space or the output space is the real numbers. Also vector space, the real numbers. Okay? And so the main thing that I want to focus on in these slides is discussing the, the last claim here, number one, well, two claims. Number one, that it's a vector space. You can prove this. We prove this in general that any, that the space of linear transformations from one vector space to another is always a vector space itself. Um, but the last claim here, that the, the dimension of V star, of the dual space, is the same as the dimension of V. Now, to show that, we need to talk about a basis for the dual space. And so, from now on, we're going to say that V is a finite dimensional vector space. Remember, finite dimensional just means that we can write down a basis, okay, and in this case I call them X's, X1 to Xn. Um, then the dual space, V star, has a natural basis itself, and these are called omega 1 to omega n. These are going to be functions, linear functions, okay? Sometimes they're called linear functionals. But linear transformations between the vector space with this basis and the real numbers. And these are defined as follows. Omega i of xj is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j, okay? So if the indices are different. And it's equal to 1 if these have the same indices. So, for example, omega 1 of x2, this is equal to 0, and omega 3 of x3, this would be equal to 1. And so, these are how, this is how these functions are defined. Now, we want to actually prove, this says that V star has a corresponding basis, so that's claiming that these omega 1 through omega n form a basis for V star. Um, we need to prove that. We can't just take that for granted. Okay. And so, to prove that a set of vectors forms a basis for a vector space, then um, we need to show that they're both spanning and linearly independent. So let's start with spanning. So let's uh, say, for spanning, we have to show that for any L in V star, so for any linear transformation in V star, and for any X in V, that we can write the L as a linear combination of omegas, okay? So first of all, let's start with the space that we know we have a basis for. So x, for v, excuse me, v, we know we have a basis for. And so we can write this x as a linear combination of the vectors, of the basis vectors of v. And remember, we had n of them. So this can be written as c1x1 plus c2x2 all the way up through cnxn. That's a sum. Okay. And then we can apply, let's just say here, um, let's apply one of our potential basis vectors, one of our omegas, let's say omega k, let's apply this to x. All right? By linearity, omega k is in V star. Whether or not it truly forms a basis or not, we're going to find out. But it's an element of V star, so it's a linear, it's a linear transformation. And so the first thing we can do is we can break up, by the way, here k is between... 1 and n inclusive here. So for any k between 1 and n, this is what we're going to get. We can write this out um, as wk of c1x1 plus c2x2, etc., all the way up to cnxn. And then by linearity, because these live in a space of linear transformations, 
then we can kind of distribute the omega k throughout this linear combination and write this as c1 omega k of x1 plus c2 omega k of x2 up through cn omega k of xn. And now think about what these things are going to equal. So omega k x1, if k is not equal to 1, then this is 0. If k is equal to 1, then this is 1, in which case the product would be c1 times 1. Okay, same goes for each of these other omega k, etc. And so only one of these is going to be equal to 1. It's going to be the one where k equals n. So for k equal to n, sorry, for, uh, it's when k is going to, sorry, when the index here, k, omega k, is going to be equal to the index on, um, on the basis for the x's. All right? So let's say it this way. For j equal to k, then omega k of xj is going to equal 1. And otherwise, this output of this function is going to give us omega k of x sub j equal to 0. And what we end up with is then this combination, omega k of x, is going to be equal to just plain ck times 1, which is ck. On the other hand, let's look at what L of this linear transformation looks like, or linear combination here. So we need to now look at L of x. Again, we do the same trick here. We replace x by its linear combination in the basis that we were given. So it's L of C1, x1, plus C2, x2, plus Cn, xn. We break this up by linearity, C1 L of X1 plus C2 L of X2, etc. Cn L of Xn. And then each of these numbers, so each of these, choose a different color, L of X1, L of X2, L of Xn, etc. These are L applied to the basis, okay? And so these are just going to be real numbers. So um, L of x, j, by our notation up here, is going to be equal to some real number a, j. All right, and so we can replace this as c1, a1, plus c2, a2, through c, n, a, n. All right, and then up here, we can then go back and re-replace. So we've got up here omega k of x is equal to ck, and so this becomes a linear combination a1 omega 1 of x plus a2 omega 2 of x through a n omega n of x. We can factor these out by our pointwise operations and write this as a1 omega 1 plus a2 omega 2 through a n omega n of x and we've shown that for any linear transformation L, then, we can write L, we can write this L as a linear combination of those omegas. Okay, and so this means that the uh, omegas, omega 1 through omega n, form a spanning set for the dual space, V star. All right, the last thing to check is linear independence and linear independence is cl is close enough closely enough related it's, it also depends on a linear combination right so this time um, instead of writing out this linear combination a1 omega 1 of x plus a2 omega 2 of x etc equals some l we know that this should actually equal the zero function so the zero linear transformation in this case, okay? And so these are all equal to one. So if we plug in one basis vector at a time, so for any basis vector, let's say, let's just start with x1. Then this linear combination says that a1 plus zero, etc., plus zero, 
must equal the zero function, and so that implies that a1 must be zero. Okay, and then we can, t can continue this on and we can repeat for uh, the index equal to two all the way up through n. So for k equals two up through n, the same is true, right? We end up with zero plus a k plus zero equals zero and implies that the a k is equal to zero. Okay, and then this proves that the omega one through omega n are linearly independent and therefore form a basis. So these are the basis linear functionals they're called or just linear transformations uh, from V, from the vector space V to R. So these form a basis for the dual space V star. Okay, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.